If you told me 20 years ago that I'd be chatting with today's guest for hang time, I wouldn't have believed you. But here we are today, closing out our 2023 season with Hall of Famer and captain of High Flyers GC, Phil Mickelson. Hey Phil, what's up? Hey Suan, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Are you ready to play the par five eight? I'm, I'm ready. I'm actually going to carry the bag. I'm not sure why I put myself up for that, but I will carry the bag on a par five. Okay, well let's do, is it called hang time? Hang time. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Downwind, off the left, wind. Well, it's been a long year. We're at the season ending event. How are you feeling? How are you evaluating this year? It's been a fun year. It's been really a fun year. The addition to our team with uh, Brendan Steele has been, he's kind of the glue that brings everybody together. And we have this chemistry and camaraderie that makes us really excited to see each other and to play in the event. So we got together at the Grove here before we headed over to Saudi last week and we had a great practice session. And then we ended up going to Montana and you know playing a little bit of golf there, but also like whitewater rafting and fly fishing and, and doing a lot of things together. And it's that dynamic where we're trying to help each other be our best and yeah. play together that I, I really cherish about the team aspect. Now we have not played as well as we, we would like to this year, but we've had a lot of great positive signs. We've been leading a number of tournaments and I think Cameron Tringali has made some the most strides of any player in the offseason last year uh, and he's been so consistent. Every yeah. time he's in the you know the top 15, he hits the ball hard. He's become really, really solid. Steely's had a good year. He's finished in the top you know, 15, 20 and I'm starting to trend. Like my, my energy level and excitement to play is up. I just need to, you know, I just need to kind of put it together scoring. I've been playing really well at home and I haven't played as well as I'd like to out here. And uh, James Pye has been really a fun energy. Now, unfortunately, he hasn't played his best this year. We're, we're going to lose him to relegation. But what is his nickname? We call him a Young Master Riot. Right. Uh, he's a riot to be around because he's just funny, yes. great energy. And we, we're, we're going to miss him. But we're also going to stay in touch and try to help him develop because we're invested yeah. in his success and want him to succeed. So we'll practice with him when we can and, and play some golf together. But we're, we're certainly going to miss him. But, you know, the addition of somebody next year, um, if, we, if we get the right fit to keep the same kind of chemistry and dynamic, but also make us better, should lead to an incredible 24. Well, first of all, I want to ask you what you think about his mustache. Because he's got a stash this week. He's rocking it. Yeah. I, Seems I to think be very proud of it. <laughs> it's a stretch to call that a mustache, I would say. Uh, but, you know, he's only 25. He just turned 25. And so he's, it, it's just not... Uh, manly but it's cute i guess it's cute <laughs> on him but so we we love the kid i mean he's really got a great energy and a fun guy to be around and he's been a great addition to the team even though he didn't play the way he wanted to this year yeah. but but i think in the long run this is going to be a good thing for him because yeah. the experience of being on live is so fun and relaxing and so forth he's going to have to go through the grind now of of playing the international series and getting his card and getting back on. If he doesn't right. go, make it through Q right. school in December, hopefully he'll do that. But we really think a lot of him and are still, like I say, invested in his success and want to do everything we can to help him succeed and hope that he calls us and asks us to, to help out. And then yeah. we're going to call him and, and try to play some practice rounds with him too. Right, very nice. Well, speaking of the promotions event, there, there's been a lot of chatter about that and pathway to live golf. As team captain, what are you hoping to perhaps achieve for high flyers in the off season? So we have two goals. They're 1A and 1B, and, and we want to have our fourth player continue with the same type of chemistry mm -hmm. and uh, desire to have this team unity that want to be invested in the team, that want to play practice rounds together, that want to help each other play better. Yeah. We want to maintain that dynamic that we've worked really hard to, to create. Yeah. And then we want to get better on the golf course. So we want to have better play and then we want to ultimately help each other be our best. So it's really a big decision for us. It's one I wish we didn't have to make, obviously with, with James, but it's also a unique opportunity for us if we can get the right fit to, to make some great strides. Well, on that topic, you've been playing for over 30 years now. How different is it for you now that you're a team owner as well as a player and managing all that? So team owner isn't as big a factor as much as it is being part of a unit that has support system, much like we had in college, where we're able to, to travel together and play together and be together. And in, out on tour can be very lonely and can be a grind. And 
here you have people to bounce ideas off of, spend time with, and we really enjoy being around each other. So it, it uh, has been really fun and invigorating and exciting to, to have that. And when we don't see each other for a few weeks and to, to play a tournament, like we're excited to see each other. Yeah. So that's been fun. And uh, I'm very inclusive, meaning I won't make a decision without the input from Camo and, and Steely. So um, we're involved in a, a lot of conversations on certain things, whether it's yeah. clothing or, or outfits or uniforms Colors. or where we're going to practice or yeah. schedule or in this case, you know, who we're, who we're going to bring in. Right. Is that tough to manage and, and try and play at the same time? No, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. It's a great opportunity, uh, especially when you have help like, like we have with Camo and Steely and my wife Amy's very uh, creative and helpful and, yeah. and got great ideas. And so we've got a good unity in our, our team makeup with our leader, uh, Frank Marzano and Peter Davis. So we have good people uh, doing a lot of the hard work. It makes it a lot easier for us. All right, let's see what we have here. Wind's coming at about 10, 10.30-ish? Yeah, 11. I mean, every par five here, in my opinion, is like 40 yards too far. Like, <laughs> Bobby Jones said the least favorite shot is the second shot to an unreachable par five. And every par five here is like 40, 50 yards too far to, to kind of reach. So I'll just take a hybrid and just uh, leave it just short of the bunkers. Sounds there good. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Well, Phil, let's talk about some of your passions. I've never really seen you without your coffee tumbler, other yeah. than when you're playing golf. What sparked that passion for coffee? I mean, honestly, coffee saved my life and saved my career because I got psoriatic arthritis in 2010 never drank coffee. I went down and to a rheumatologist, got on some, some meds, but I wanted to get off of them and I didn't want to, I wanted to be accountable. I'd never been accountable for my health until I was 40 and I get psoriatic arthritis. So I go down to this health practitioner and he says, your immune system is out of balance. You have too much Th1 cells and not enough Th2. And he, and he says, you've got to stop taking echinacea, which is an herb a lot of people take for... to try to help their immune system. Right. I'm toxic to that. And I was getting sick every three or four months. And so I stopped taking that. He says, you got to drink coffee all day drink coffee, take resveratrol and green tea extract. So I started doing that and I was able to get my arthritis in remission. I've been off all meds for six, seven, eight years now. And is I, it just a caffeine that helps with that? Or is it like something specific in coffee and like green tea that? I think it's a combination of not just the caffeine, but it's the antioxidants. Coffee okay. is the highest intake of antioxidants that people have, but mm -hmm. they put a lot of bad stuff in it, like sugar and cream and so forth. So we ended up uh, developing a formula of stuff that allows me to get healthier and better. So we have you know, collagen protein powder, MCT powder, uh, sea salt to help with hydration, cinnamon for anti-inflammatory. And then we put the key for this is L-theanine, which is an amino acid natural to your body where golfers get a little jittery when they're on coffee. And I was gonna say, yeah. how do you play golf with that much caffeine so in your system? The L-theanine latches onto the caffeine and creates a calm and gets rid of those jitters. So there are studies that show that in every sport, caffeine improves performance, but mm -hmm. in golf, there's potential for those jitters to come into, into play. And the L-theanine is a big ingredient in, in our good stuff that we put into, our, into my coffee that helps me utilize the benefits, but not get the, the jitters. Does the stuff come in a, a sachet or, or it is does, it? It does, just a little carry sachet I just pour into, into my coffee. And uh, we have two flavors, one cinnamon, and then the, the other one we call Focus, but it's with mocha. It's got, uh, they're only like 15 calories. There's no sugar, there's nothing bad in it. It's all about, creating a health benefit, but we also create a nice flavor profile. Sounds pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, I love coffee, Yeah. but I get like shakes after I do like two so cups. So I'll give you some, one of these packs. I wonder if I have some in here. I might, if I have okay. some in my, no, I don't have any. But uh, if we, if if you put it in the coffee, you'll, you'll have the same experience. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we'd love to try it for sure. So Phil, you, you were a cameo in Tin Cup. Yeah. <laughs> How fun was that? I mean, I was itty bitty <laughs> when that ha <laughs> happened, but it was a great experience for me to kind of see how movies were shot yeah. and be a part of that and be around, you know, Kevin Costner and Cheech Marin and, and guys and see, again, how movies were shot. It was two days for like 90 seconds of the film. Yeah. 
And I'm like, God, this is not really what I want to do. But unfortunately, it became a big part of my career as far as like with commercials and things we had to do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a lot of people love it. It's not really my thing. I, I like being out playing and, and competing, but it's a part of the job. Yeah, there's a lot of waiting when you're filming, isn't it? It's just sitting around waiting and getting yeah. the lighting. And the doing it over and over and yeah. different takes and different film angles and so forth. Well, if you were to have someone play you in a movie, Mm. Maybe one day. So Who like, would it be? I always get mistaken for Hugh Grant, and he gets mistaken for me. I, think. I can totally see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God, he's really handsome, isn't he? Uh, I don't know, but no, he. Uh, I can 100% see that. So I could see that, and I, I we have kind of a similar sense of humor. I'm not British, but I I like his kind of dry sense of humor. I always laugh at, at his stuff. Oh boy, he's gonna have to learn how to play golf left-handed. I don't even know if he plays golf right-handed. I think he does because I've seen him play at the Dunhill Cup. He's pretty good. He is. Yeah. I think oh so. well, he, maybe he needs to start practicing lefty. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Phil, I heard you have a pretty special and sentimental ball marker. Can you yeah. share share with us a little bit more about that? Uh, so this is a silver dollar, it's a Morgan Head silver dollar from 1900. What makes this unique is my grandfather grew up poor mm -hmm. and in fourth grade he was taken out of school to, and forced to go work to help his family. And he took this silver dollar and he would keep it in his pocket and he would rub it because he, would, he wouldn't spend it, he wouldn't buy things with her a meal. He would skip meals for, I, I don't know how many, how often, but he would skip a meal so that he wouldn't have to spend this because when he rubbed it, he, he felt like he had money. And so when he passed away, he ended up giving this to me. And it's kind of a reminder. My, my grandfather was one of the first caddies the first year that Pebble Beach opened. He lived up in Monterey. And he, he took those earnings and he ended up working on a tuna boat and then owned his own tuna boat in San Diego, died a multimillionaire, and was an extremely hard worker and just really appreciated things. And so something like this uh, means a lot to me because it reminds me of kind of where our family came from. And yeah. every time I played Pebble, you know, I ended up winning there five times. And every yeah. time I won, I think it's unreal that we're playing for this kind of money. And, and he was, you know, making 35 cents a loop or whatever it yeah. was back then. It yeah. was uh, in incredible how far things have come. Well, do you ever do the same, you know, put your hands in your pocket and, and touch? Yeah, the I'm doing it right now. I mean, it's just habit, you know, it I is. just, yeah. Just, but I think of him a lot, you know. Yeah. When I won the Masters in 2004, I would, before that, I would give my flags to the tournaments that I've won to him and yeah. I'd make it out to him. And he said, you're, I don't want a regular tournament. I want to, I want a major now. And so, December of 03 was about two weeks before uh, he passed away. He said, mm -hmm. you're gonna win the Masters this year. So when that putt went in on the last hole in 04, it actually spun around the hole. And as it went in, my first thought was that he nudged it in. So I think about Aww. him a lot. We used to have a lot of special moments. I would go to his house and we would sit there for a few hours and just talk about, you know, whatever. And, yeah. and had these great conversations. And I, I really miss him. Was he a good golfer? Did he play or? He played a lot, yeah. yeah. We used to go down this little course called Balboa. Uh, when I was five I years know old, Balboa, and take me, yeah. yeah, the nine hole course, yeah. uh, he would take me, and so that's where where I played a lot with him. What all a right, great story! Okay, 87. 87. 87. All right, we got 87. Pins back into the wind. I don't want the ball spinning. You can see it's on a pitch, so I want to bring it in low, flat, without spin. If I hit sand wedge, I think it's gonna have a little too much spin. If I hit nine iron, it's gonna probably be released too much. If I hit pitching wedge, probably released too much. So I'm looking at gap. Fifth. 50? Uh, yeah. I hit gap wedge 125. I hit a Pell's gap 115. I've got 87, so I'm going to shorten up, take 20 yards off it, which means I'm just going to shorten my backswing and accelerate. So hopefully I won't have enough speed to create enough spin so it backs up and I'll be able to bring it and just kind of have it die around the divot. That's kind of what I'm looking at. If I Perfect. feel like I'm going to have to hit it too hard to get there and it's going to have too much spin, I'll drop down to a pitching wedge. Perfect. But, um, Do what you just said. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was looking pretty good. Go. So it landed and stayed right around the divot. I didn't hit it hard enough to get to the hole. It's a good chop. Chop, chop. Let's go. Come on. I mean, come on now. Cut me some slack. Phil, you've had a, a, an amazing career, obviously, and still going. But how would you want to be remembered? If you were to reflect. I, I'm, I, I feel like right now we're building kind of our legacy, all the players out here, because we're bringing golf 
throughout the world now with Liv. Yeah. That's never been done, and it never would be done on the PGA Tour because they don't have the ability to control the schedule. Mm -hmm. And Liv controls our schedule 14 weeks of the year. And the great thing is we have 38 weeks where we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Uh, on the tour, you know, you're controlled 52 weeks. You've got to get approval to do whatever. But bringing golf globally is a big thing. And bringing it to different parts of the world is a big thing. And creating the, a, a different experience for professionals uh, where this is a great example. Right here on, on Pro-Am Day, the amount of energy output because we're able to come here and, and, and be around our amateur partners, although not on this hole, but engage, engage with them yeah. when we're not able to do that on tour where we have so many people yeah. uh, on you throughout the day. So I, I think the biggest thing is building a legacy that brings golf globally. That's That to me is, is, is the big thing. And changing I, kind of the golf, the experience for the professional golfers so that they're valued and appreciated in a different way than, than I've experienced throughout my career. I love it. All right, and finally, one last question. What would you tell your 21-year-old self? Um, I'll clean your golf ball while you're talking. I, I don't know. I, I don't know because I, I loved and have loved everything about uh, the 30 plus years that I've played professionally. I, I've just really enjoyed it. I have so much appreciation and gratitude for the, the time that I've had on the PJ Tour and the opportunities that were provided to me and all players from the greats of the game that came before us to build that up and now to continue that and bring uh, more jobs, more opportunities and a different experience. Yeah. Like I'm excited. I don't know what I would say to a tw my 21 year old self. That's always, than, that's a good thing. Know, yeah. Enjoy the journey and the process yeah. because I think what I appreciate most as I look back on my career is not the wins, it's the journey and the process to get the wins, like the yeah. trophies. It's rewarding, but it's the what I really look back on is the process that, that allowed for that to happen. I don't yeah. sit there and cherish the time on the podium. I cherish the time in the in the the in, journey in, getting there. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's watch you make this birdie on the par okay. five. Uh, uphill, right to left. How much would you play that uh, break? Would you say? I would say about. Two feet? That's exactly what I was thinking. Wow, you yes! might. So if this is two feet, pressure. I'll be impressed. Uphill into the grain. I think we uh, read it right. I just didn't hit, hit it. it. Yeah. yeah, I think we had it right on good read. Solid par. Yeah, Stress free. Par on this hole, though, cost me my match last year with Cam Smith. That's we were right. dead even going to the last right. hole. It was our final hole, and I ended up not birding it. He did, and I lost. That's right. I remember that. Anyways, Phil, thank you so much for doing that. Really appreciate it. I can now say that I've caddied for Phil Mickelson. How cool is that? Well, thanks for having me on Hang Time. I've enjoyed it, and thanks for carrying the bag, giving Andrew a break. He needed it. And Look, it, nice. I, it sounded like I didn't do that good of a job, but I'll take it. You know, I'll clean your club, yeah. I'll clean your wedge in a second. Just you know. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's have thanks, a great Phil. week. Yeah, thanks. thanks good luck. Guys.